All right, here's the integral of the day. We have indefinite integral of y squared over 16 minus y squared raised to the 3 halves dy. And you may not notice it at first glance, but this is a perfect time to use a trig sub because we have an expression that matches the form a squared minus your variable squared, which in this case is y squared. Okay, so be on the lookout for that guy. Usually it's underneath a radical like that, but in this case, same thing because raising something to the three halves power is taking the square root of some expression and then cubing it. So perfect time for that trig sub. What we're gonna do for this particular integral is let y equal four sine theta. Where's the four coming from? Because a squared is 16. So that makes a equal to four. Then dy would be four cosine theta d theta. So let's go ahead, make that substitution and change our variables in the integral. So now in the numerator, instead of y squared, I'm gonna have four sine theta squared. That's gonna make it 16 sine squared theta. And then in the denominator, we'll have 16 minus, again, y squared is 16 sine squared theta. This is raised to the 3 halves. And instead of dy, what do we have? Yes, 4 cosine theta d theta. Good job. Okay, the beauty of this trig sub all comes down to being able to factor and use a identity here to clean things up. So let's see what we got going on. Indefinite integral, 16 sine squared theta over, I'm gonna to switch to some brackets. Let me take out the 16, and then I have one minus sine squared theta. This is all raised to the three halves, and then I've got four cosine theta d theta. Okay, good. I can tell right off the bat, I'm gonna replace this one minus sine squared theta with cosine squared theta. And then just to clean things up, let's take this four and 16 outside of the integral. So we've got a 64 sitting outside, yes. And then sine squared theta, cosine theta. I'm just, I'm just moving this guy so they can hang out together, okay? Why not? Mm -hmm. Over, we have 16 cosine squared theta. And that's all raised to the 3 halves power. Don't forget that d theta. Okay, how do you raise something to the 3 halves power? Well, you take the square root first and then you cube it. So think about it this way. 16 to the 3 halves. Take the square root of 16, that's 4. And then you cube it, so that's going to be 64. And then same thing, cosine squared theta raised to the 3 halves. Remember that squared is really written in such a way so we can not have to put these parentheses, but if it helps you, then you can just use your rules of exponents, multiply those guys together, and this gives you cosine of theta cubed, which we don't write that way. We write cosine cubed theta. Okay, so that means now we've got a lot of fun cancellation going on, 64 integral sine squared theta, cosine theta, and then the denominator now is 64 cosine cubed theta d theta. Lovely. Look at all the cancellation that we can do. So now 64 is gone, and then one of the cosines cancels out, so this is cosine squared. So now I just have sine squared over cosine squared, which I'm gonna rewrite as tangent squared theta. Do I know the antiderivative of tangent squared theta? No, but let me use a trig identity. I'm gonna replace tangent squared theta with secant squared theta minus one d theta. And this I can easily integrate term by term. Antiderivative of secant squared theta, that's tangent theta minus antiderivative of one is just theta plus c. But no, we're not done. Remember, our original integral was in terms of y, so we gotta go back there. How do we do it? It's triangle time. 
go back to that original substitution that we made, we said that y was equal to 4 sine theta. That means that sine of theta is equal to y over 4. And we know sine of theta is the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So using the Pythagorean theorem, this missing side is going to be 16 minus y squared. All right, great. So that means tangent of theta, tangent of this angle is going to be opposite over adjacent. So I can replace it with y over rad 16 minus y squared minus what was theta? Well, since we let y equal 4 sine theta and y over 4 is sine theta, I can just say theta by itself is sine inverse of y over 4. And then you still got that plus c. Box that answer with pride and you're done with the integral for the day.